Thank you, Angie. I'm really happy to be here today. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Can I get a verbal cue that that's visible? Yeah. Thank you. All right. So thanks for um, first and foremost for inviting me to be on this panel. I'm really excited to share a little bit more about our work in co-location um, at Enterprise Community Partners. As mentioned, my name is Juanita Salinas. I work at Enterprise Community Partners, uh, really focused on early learning programming. Uh, Enterprise Community Partners is a nonprofit that has offices nationwide. We work out of our Seattle offices in Washington State. And I'm really excited to talk a little bit more about our initiative called Home and Hope, which is really focused on creating early learning and affordable housing together. What I'll do is I'll briefly share an overview of how this vision really came to be, um, how we really got funding started for this work, and we'll be sharing a couple of the key examples of co-location projects in our region. So how did this vision come to be? Um, a number of years ago, our previous market leader, M.A. Leonard, was really working at addressing the gap in affordable housing within King County and Washington State. And she was working very closely with Mary Jean Ryan, who was the executive director of Community Center for Education Results. And Mary Jean really shined light on the fact that Washington State is, was, and for many years now, has been facing an extreme shortage of childcare availability for children in Washington. Um, more than anything, uh, even with the lack of slots, we really were lacking in actual classroom and space. And so them two together were really looking at these two parallel gaps that King County was facing, the lack of affordable housing and the lack of access to childcare spaces. At the same time, uh, MA was working with Frank Chop, who was then the Speaker of the House, and they were getting together to really think about how to use public sites and how to use them for housing community facilities and early learning. So while these partnerships and connections and um, discoveries, were, discoveries were being made, James Madden came on board to Enterprise to help lead some of these efforts. He comes from Boston and has a rich his, um, experience in affordable housing. He is now our market leader since MA's retirement. And, and James came on board in 2017, was able to secure some initial funding from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, which helped seed the Home and Hope work, which ultimately's purpose is the, to advance the development of affordable housing and early childhood education centers on underutilized tax exempt sites owned by public agencies and nonprofits. And so the first piece of work that Enterprise really embarked on is to put together a, a how-to guide that we call our Home and Hope Packet. And this how-to guide was really a result of a convening from local housing developers, architects, childcare providers, public funders who had already successfully created co-location projects in the region. And out of that convening, we really put together this guide on key strategies, best practices, challenges, partnerships to consider when someone wants to embark on a co-location project. We refer to this packet a lot in our work, especially when working with local developers who are interested in co-location. And I highly recommend anyone who's interested um, in reading this. Um, this is open and available for anyone who is. And I'll work with Angie to see if we can get this out after the webinar. Um, the key recommendations are listed on the slide of what we cover in this packet. And I think it's really a great tool to use to help get you started on thinking about what it takes to make co-location possible. So the process of really, um, that came out of really doing this research, we were really looking at um, collaborating with so local um, state politicians, uh, representatives to really support our work. And that's when we began working with Representative Ruth Kagey who was really a champion in early learning. She had spent many years advocating uh, for ch children and families in Washington state. And in the 2017-18 legislative session, we worked with her to draft a bill to help get funding for early learning facilities develop, uh, development specifically. And we were able to pass that bill. And what we did is create a two-pronged approach um, that would include 
funding for uh, an early learning facilities grant that folks could apply for and access throughout the state to help build new childcare centers. And the second piece would be a CDFI portion. We brought uh, two partners in to help promote that work, the Washington Community Reinvestment Association and CRAFT3, um, to help think about how can we also provide financing al alongside a grant program for early learning facilities. So our, which has the CDFI portion, which I'll cover briefly right now, created um, in, launched in January in 2020, we now call our Washington Early Learning Loan Fund or Well Fund for short. And this is really um, a partnership between Enterprise, Craft3 and WCRA to provide financing for early learning providers and developers across Washington state. And since our launching, um, we've been able to match those initial dollars that we received from the Department of Commerce and we received some dollars from the Balmer Group the Seattle Foundation and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to help start that loan fund. Since January, we've been able to um, finance and close five deals. We've been able to offer several grants, um, which has resulted in 53 new classrooms and 500 new childcare slots. And so thinking about our Home and Hope initiative, really one uh, arm of it is the Well Fund to provide that financing and we work closely with the Department of Commerce to help um, execute the grant, the sister grant program that matches that. And on the other arm, we have our site feasibility work, which is led by an amazing architect that we have on staff that provides technical assistance, feasibility, due diligence for affordable housing and early learning community facilities. And I, that is my one minute mark. So I'm going to move to cover two really great local examples of co-location in our region. Um, the first one is El Centro de la Raza Plaza Roberto Maestas. El Centro is a nonprofit that runs 43 community programs and social services. And for many years, they were um, running an, a childcare center out of the white building on the left of the picture. They decided to embark on creating affordable housing on the land that they owned, which is the building on the right. It includes 112 units, they have retail and office space and a public plaza. And it's located across the street from a, our local uh, link station. So it is a, a transportation development oriented development. And they currently offer seven operating early learning classroom. And for us, speaking from someone who's from the Seattle area, I did grow up attending El Centro's community events. So this is a key example of um, a co-location project that is built by and used by the community. Our second example, and I might go a little over, so I'm almost done, <laughs> um, is our uh, beloved Mercy Magnuson Place. Magnuson is located on a local park that includes lots of trails and very, very quick access to bus lines and access to the University of Washington in downtown Seattle. This is um, a location that offers 148 units of studios, one bedroom, two bedroom, and three bedrooms for families. Um, here in the center, this white building is a 1700 square foot childcare center, which is operated by Denise Louis Education Center, six classrooms of infant, preschool, and toddler aged children. There's also a health clinic on site here, operated by Neighbor, Neighbor Care Health. Um, this is a great um, example that not only offers our early learning piece, but a community support program clinics. Um, this is an award-winning location and so um, also a great example of co-location. So that was a very, very quick overview of our Home and Hope initiative. I'm more than happy to connect with anyone who would like to have continued conversations about our Home and Hope work, um, some of the challenges we face, but also the continued success and projects that we are currently working on. So thank you so much. Thank you, Juanita. I love how you 